¿Se va a hablar desde ahí? Hable. ¿Qué tal? ¿Cómo se escucha? ¿Se escucha bien? 
probando si mido 1, 2, 3. Si so, mido 1, 2, 3 probando si. Más o menos. Ahí más o menos. ¿Ya, ya tiene el link? Ya se los envío. Ahí se envía el link. ¿Se está transmitiendo? Sí, está transmitiendo. El sonido se corta a veces. Creo que yo después lo puedo cortar. ¿Pero qué? Hay dos personas mirando ahora. No sé quién es, pero hay dos personas. Sí, yo me miré a mi familia, no sé. Sí, la tía Falta luz, más bien. Sí. Sí, poca luz. ¿Cómo hace esta vez?
Yo me acuerdo que Francisco y... No me acuerdo quién más. Blo todos. Como... Uno a uno. Empezaron a hablar. Ahí se acaba todo. Bueno, acá. ¿No hay algo en notificaciones? Creo que sí, a ver algo. O sea, había algo en notificaciones, pero... En Skype, al lado, al lado izquierdo. Arriba, al lado izquierdo de contactos. Privacidad, de pronto. Notificaciones. Arriba, notifica, habilitar notificaciones. Arriba tiene un checkbox. Ya, pero claro, hay que hacerlo en forma... 
una vez que tenga las notas, nos, nos tiene que mandar un correo diciendo, por favor, agregar nota y eso lo hayan dejado, porque cuando tiene que meter, los colocan en el sistema, puede agregar el sistema. Ya, y de ahí eh, se inscribe. Así que hay muchos casos como él, que, que, que el alumno no, aún no, no se ha puesto en la nota, pero que ya es en el sitio que se está apostando. Pero yo les puedo firmar. ¿Pero les puedo firmar o tengo que esperar que tengo sí, no, sí, en firmar, la casa? Sí, puede firmar, sí. Eh, y el próximo lunes se abre normalmente siempre bien. Nos vemos. Nos vemos. Chao. Chao, profe. Y vos, Pablo Pegador. Eh, yo espero que hacia finales o inicios del otro año, profe. O sea, ahora con pruebas experimentales. ¿Y luego para dónde? No sé. Cuando se salga, profe. <risa> ubicar lo más que podamos. Profe, ¿qué pasó con el proyecto? De... Eh, eh, ahí a un muchacho de pregrado está haciendo un mensaje de Y luego va a comenzar una, algo experimental. Ah, bueno. Porque si quiere, coordinamos con una reunión o yo me reúno con él. Como para él iba a terminar ahorita es agosto, ¿verdad? Finales de agosto ya terminó. En septiembre... Él está trabajando con Claudio Ustedes. Yeah. Pero está haciendo un estado de arte más detallado de lo que ya tiene. Uh -huh. sí, en septiembre podemos hablar. Sí, me parece. Yo debería estar viajando. O sea, mi plan es viajar en octubre a, dónde? a Colombia. Y el carne ya va a escribir. Ah, te vas a regresar. Sí, creo que. Sí. Entonces, eso es como mi ya. plan. Ya, entonces, en septiembre. Me parece. Que regresas en enero. Sí, ya para defender yo creo. ¿Y las publicaciones ya las envías? Eh, enviamos una y la rechazaron. Ah, rapidito. No, si se demoraron como un poco más de dos meses, yo creo. Pero te dieron resumition. Sí, fue... dieron, dieron el feedback, fueron siete revisores. ¿En casa fueron... Sí. En el Smart Bits. Y... ¿Pero fue eh, rejected resumption? O... No, solamente rechazado. Entonces, como que eso nos hizo adelantar también parte del trabajo que teníamos para la segunda publicación y para incluirlo dentro de la, dentro de la primera también. Porque hubo varios revisores que nos pidieron como... Lo, eh, ¿Cosas en común? Sí. ¿Y, y, y ahorita sí lo tienen listo para eso? Sí. De hecho, la parte teórica ya está desarrollada y ahora estamos con pruebas experimentales desarrollando todo el setup experimental. En eso estamos. Publicaciones de los másteres. Sí, profe. Sí. No, no, es, no es slogan play. No. Sí, como que uno envía y empieza a sufrir. Ya cuando empiezan a pasar las Porque semanas si no le dan no puedes responder si no está claro. si no hay paper aceptado sí. eso lo toca uh -huh. pero la profe te está pidiendo primer por ti o cualquier cosa eh, pero pura transacción o puede ser algo más estamos apuntando a algo algo bueno sí. Sí. pero si sí, viste que los viewers son pesados sí. Bueno, sí. claro. Este es el problema. Quedas dos, 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 tres meses al aire sí. desconectado. Es que ese es el problema. Pero se puede. Y no han visto algunos más rápidos como hay Triple y Open Access. Hay unas de. Hay unas de Open Access, pero toca pagar del. Son como 1750. Sí, exacto. Pero eh, en cuatro o seis semanas está listo. Sí. Sí, sí, sí. Un compañero sí la aplicó a una Open Access. ¿Con tu beca no, no tenés fondos para pagar el... Eh, no creo, profe. No, igual mi beca ya terminó. Entonces ya, ya no tengo los beneficios. Porque yo conozco un par de alumnos de que o el tiempo con eso, ¿verdad? Claro. Sí, sería una buena opción también. O la profesora tal vez un proyecto fondo y... Claro. Porque hay, en todo caso de operación se puede usar para pagar. Claro. Y el Impact Factor de esta revista está... Todo Exacto. Bien. Sí, como es Open Access, sí. todo el mundo le... Hablamos. Chao, profe, Chao. que esté muy bien. Chao. Suerte. Gracias, igual. Sí, bueno. eh, ya no te veo.
Fuerte en Holanda. Vale, gracias. Voy a... Juan Carlos Millar, dice, vamos con todo a Carlos Huevón. Póngale todo el Nehuen. El Mecha. ¿A ese? Sí. Saludos al Mecha. Buenas. Hola. Buenas. ¿La transmisión me? Ya estamos. En sí, vivo. yo la abrí en el celular y todo. Casualmente todo lo que estamos hablando se escucha. Ahí conectó Marta. ¿Ah? Hola Marta. No está en cámara, tiene que correrse un poquito. Hay que correrse. Tres edificios afuera. Izquierda. ¿Tú sales? Ah, ya. Ya está Oscar Trejo, Alexander Martínez. Hay seis personas. ¿Cómo? Antes como yo, Oscar Trejo. Trejos. ¿Me dejaron Francisco? Eh, no sé. Dice Oscar que si puede hablar más duro que no se escucha nada. ¿Oscar Trejo? Sí. Ah, ¿usted conoce a Oscar Trejo? ¿No se acuerda? Sí. Pastucito. Ahí conecto Liz. Sí, sí, Colombia, sí, sí, Caribe. Uh, Liz. Oscar me corrigió que no es de pasto sino de pieles. Ah, ¿verdad que Liz también lo conoce? Sí, sí, sí. Yo, o sea, yo que... Porque yo no he compartido el link todavía. Yo no he compartido el link todavía. Liz ya está incitando al pecado. Trejo y Checho debemos celebrar el doctorado de Carlitos. Dice Alexander Martínez que her. saludos de Cindy y Mariana. Her. Saludos a her. ¿Quién es Alexander Martínez? Her. De Colombia. Ah. Yeah, her. Sí. Hola, her. Ah, estás en el signo. Déjame ver. Ya. Yeah. <risa> 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 a ver, mira el pajarito. 
Pero no se comentó el ancho de banda. ¿Ah? No se comentó el ancho de banda. No le creo. Ya se le fue la. Ahí sale tu voz. Liz pide un acercamiento para ver el vestido. Hola. Don Carlos. No, Liz no se ha conectado. Liz ya. Ahora hay nueve personas conectadas. ¿Tiene los empastes? Carlos, dice Marta que Doña María le manda muchos saludos. Que pruebe el volumen de voz que va a utilizar, dice Marta. Que apine. <risa> dice Liz que sí se puede acercar para el vestido. ¿Qué cosa? <risa>
Good morning to everyone. This is Marco Sorcher. Morning. Good morning. the my screen already yes and do you listen well yes yes okay we are just waiting for my supervisor Okay, good morning. My name is Patricio Mena. I will be the president of this uh, uh, defense. We'll more or less carry out the formal uh, tasks. Uh, well, this uh, defense will have uh, three parts. In the first, uh, Carlos will give a presentation of around 20, 30 minutes. Uh, then it will be followed by questions of the people in the defense uh, committee and lately and later we will deliver and give a recommendation for passing or not passing uh, so the first thing carlos with your presentation please thank you well, hello uh, thanks all of you for being here today especially to the professors and examiners of this thesis. Um, today I'm going to present quickly the results of my thesis that is called a framework for learning continuous actions from corrective advice. Um, well, I'm a PhD candidate under the supervision of Professor Javier Ruiz de Lula. Okay. Well, the context of this thesis is robust learning uh, continuous action policies. Uh, in machine learning, there are two main branches for this. Autonomous learning and interactive machine learning. Autonomous learning, uh, reinforcement learning, agents interact with the environment and explore the actions necessary to uh, maximize the outcomes or rewards that are obtained by the optimal from the environment. Uh, these approaches uh, have the problem that requires a lot of experience, and this is not feasible all the time with uh, real robots. On the other hand, Interactive machine learning uh, allows users to um, quickly, but with the disadvantage that um, not all the times the, the policies that are learned are optimal, and it is most of the times required that the demonstrations are from extra users. So, uh, in interactive machine learning, the user is in the loop of 
the interaction of the environment and the agent, and the user is providing some sort of uh, feedback to the agent in order to teach it. Uh, this feedback could be like evaluative feedback or feedback in the actions domain. The actions domain, the user is telling to the agent what to do or how to act, and this is more comfortable for the users. On the other hand, the evaluative domain, the users are like, evaluating the, the actions that are performed or the policies. This is like giving rewards or punishment to, to the actions. Uh, in this case, it is not necessarily that the user is uh, an expert demonstrator, so it has an advantage in this case. Taking this into account, uh, the motivation of this research, research is to have algorithms that allow non-expert users or demonstrators to teach agents in the context of continuous actions giving feedback in the, in the action domain. So the hypothesis of this thesis are related to obtaining a faster processes of learning and reaching a higher performances in the policies, connected to an interactive learning strategy for teaching agents with human corrective advice in the continuous action space. The user algorithm based on the past information of the user feedback. And finally, extending this, to problems of multiple actions, including problems that have a mismatch in between the feedback of the user and the actions domain. So the main objective of this test is, is to design, implement, and validate with robotic tasks a learning from corrections-based framework, which models the human feedback and incorporates it into the learning process. The specific objectives. First is to propose and validate a framework that allows robots to learn tasks with actions of one dimension based on human feedback in the actions domain. The second objective is to def design a model that uh, models, models the, the uh, intentions of the user based on the past history of the feedback. Uh, the third is to extend this for multiple actions, problems, and including the problems that have the correspondence problem between the feedback and the actions. And finally, to implement and validate this uh, with real robots. Okay. Outcomes of this discussions. First uh, was the, the framework that was proposed for learning with only pure uh, human feedback, with feedback in the actions domain, uh, for problems of market decision processes. The second contribution is to combine this with reinforcement learning in order to obtain the advantages of both. Uh, approaches, and also in the context of uh, Markov decision processes. And finally, the third uh, contribution is to extend this uh, to the context of learning motor skills in, with trajectories that are parameterized with um, movement primitives. Well, the first contribution, we propose a corrective advice communicated by humans that coach, which is a framework where the users can uh, correct during the policy execution the actions that the, the, the policy is computing. So the user gives a binary signal of feedback, like increase or decrease the action. And then this feedback is used, used for updating the policy in the next time step. Uh, we validated this with several problems. Uh, like some of them are in these videos, like uh, the card problem, bike balancing, uh, the uh, dribbling with biped robots. In these problems, the users have to tell how to modify the actions during the execution. For instance, in the in the car pull, the, the, the user is telling to the agent, like increasing the, the force of the car to the right or to the left. In the case of the uh, bike balancing, the, the, the user is advising, like increasing or decreasing the torque in the handlebar or the shift of the rider that in this simulation is not, but, but in the model it is. And in the case of uh, dribbling, it is about uh, modifying the velocity request to the walking gene in order to move the ball to an objective. The experiments were comparing this coach framework against uh, other interactive learning frameworks and also with reinforcement learning, and in some cases also with the users trying to learn to execute these tasks. So, in the results, mm -hmm, we observed that with coach we got faster conver convergences and in some cases with a way better uh, performance of the final policy. And also we observed that in some cases where we try to make the, the users to learn to operate agents, uh, we observed that they learn, they 
talk better the, the users than what they were able to, to, to learn to, to operate. So they, they were better at teaching than at executing or demonstrating tasks. Uh, this first part of, of the thesis uh, was needed to uh, uh, the journal of intelligent and robotic systems paper that did this research. Um, in the second contribution, uh, it was about combining work with uh, a policy search. Uh, in this case, it, it is in order to obtain both advantages of learning with a cost function plus the human ad uh, advice. We proposed to combine this in a sequential and also simultaneous way. In the sequential, we uh, start policy search after a policy that was trained with coach. But in simultaneous, we were using both simultaneously uh, in the case where the feedback is given to the, to the agent and the reinforcement learning algorithm takes this uh, as exploration for, for the policy. Uh, in this case, also validated some tasks like the car call, but a version that it is not only about balancing the task, but also um, centering the car in the, in the center of the scenario. And also the swim up pendulum, the inverted wedge, and uh, also learning the inverse schematics of a 3 degree of freedom robot arm. The experiments in this case show that uh, we obtain the advantages of both. We learn very fast at the beginning, like uh, similarly to the case of only learning from human, but learning more, more robustly at the end and getting the fine tuning of reinforcement learning. So. <coughs> We also did experiments simulating agent, uh, simulating teachers, in order to control uh, some um, factors like the mistakes that the users uh, do during the, the teaching part. And we observed that uh, the simultaneous uh, scheme that we propose is more robust to the mistakes that the users are sometimes uh, giving. This with respect to the original coach and the sequential one. And we also compared this, this uh, experiments, the learning of while well, teaching with this scheme against uh, learning, the, making the users to learn to operate the agent. We also got that the, these users are better at teaching than trying to learn the, the task or afterwards to try to give demonstrations. Uh, this second part was also uh, gathered and submitted to the Autonomous Robots Journal, that is also a paper that was already published. And the third contribution of this thesis is the extension of this framework for learning modular skills with uh, representations of policies that are with movement primitives, like dynamic movement primitives or probabilistic movement primitives. In this case, we focus in the problem of the mismatch in the, between the human feedback and the actions that the robot executes. So we needed to have two alternatives, uh, policies in the Cartesian space and policies in joint space, because we consider that always the user is providing feedback in the task domain. So sometimes we need to try to map this, this feedback to the joint space. Uh, this was part of, of, of the work. So we first uh, validated the task we, we trying to learn to write symbols, only providing feedback. Well, first, initially, we provide some demonstrations of some symbols, and then from this data set, we derived out a policy that is the starting point of, of this exercise. So we try to improve this, this symbol. One, first, like you giving feedback with the coach framework, and also trying to give more demonstrations like for in order to compare the both approaches both interactive approaches. Uh, and we found that uh, it's way easier and faster learning with the corrective feedback that is less invasive and more intuitive. The experiments, well, mo the most interesting in this case was when was when we combined with reinforcement learning for this task of learning the ball in a cap. So in this case, the, the policy at the beginning is not doing anything and with the human feedback, we got to learn this task after 20 episodes, which is uh, more or less five times faster than the state of the art. Um, in this problem, 
we compare coach against the the coach of the coach and against only police search and differently to the state of the art we we also compare this starting from a demonstration but also learning from scratch and for the proposed algorithms this didn't make so much difference that it is the case that was not very uh, well, all, the, all those results were also submitted to uh, the, a paper that is in, under review in the International Journal of Robotics Research, that is the top uh, journal in robotics. Well, the conclusions, well, after all these experiments and proposals, uh, we found that with this proposal, this framework that we uh, proposed, we got um, that the interactive machine learning approaches are now wider, have wider applicability. Since now, in these problems of continuous actions, it is possible to to teach agents without the necessity of being expert. Uh, we also observed in the experiments that coach is more robust uh, to mistaken feedback compared to other uh, interactive machine learning approaches. Uh, Similarly to this, with the hybrid uh, approaches based in coach and reinforcement learning, we also found that it is more robust even compared to the original version. But also it reduces the workload of the user because the fine tuning of the reinforcement learning part is helping at the end of the process of learning. Uh, well, the general conclusion is that uh, experiments always faster convergences than the other methods and reaching higher performances policies with respect to those other methods. With uh, exhaustive experiments, we did uh, about 15 uh, study cases in which five of them were with real robots or real systems, physical systems. And those uh, study cases were with different kinds of problems like balancing, uh, navigation, or skills with a... Uh, uh, well, in future work, there are several paths to follow uh, based on, on this kind of feedback for teaching agents. Uh, one of them is trying to propose a framework that is active learning. Actively learning with um, coach, for instance, the user is also receiving feedback from, from the agent. We're in the states of, uh, the, no, in the regions of the state space where the policy is more uncertain, the, the agent can like advise to the user to focus more in these moments to in order to to provide more feedback. So the participation of the user is is encouraged. Uh, other uh, future work is already ongoing work that is um, uh, about extending coach to the policies representations, changing the the this uh, uh, representation that we use in the in this thesis for deep neural networks. Um, also another. Uh, possibility is to study more how to change the exploration of reinforcement learning agents based on the human feedback, not only combining like we did in this case, uh, combining both and taking the human feedback as exploration, but also trying to learn uh, probability density distributions for, for exploration that the reinforcement learning agent can do. Uh, during this uh, thesis, uh, I wrote for uh, conference papers in during the uh, RoboCap Symposium, one in the Latin American Conference of Computational Intelligence and one in the International Conference of uh, Advanced Robotics, and three journal papers, which one is still under review. And I got uh, some awards, one grant from the RoboCap Federation, uh, two best paper awards, and one best post American summary school of computational intelligence. Here, I finish my presentation. Thank you very much. Well, we will proceed with the round of questions. I will ask first the public if there is any question among the public. Well, I will consider myself part of the public and consider that I am not in the field. I would like you to ask a question because at some point, for example, for example, if you go to page 12, for example, for well, or the, the uh, 12, for example, where you show 
comparison with the first uh, method that you were showing, where do you, where, where, as a layman myself, where do I see that your algorithm is better than others, for example? Where, where, where should I see okay, this, 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 this graph? This, these plots are showing the, the evolution of the performance of the policy through the episodes of learning. So the highest, the, 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 the reward is, is the better. So you, you see here that the coach is the red dashed line, and in most of the cases is reaching the, the highest part earlier than the other. Okay. Uh, time also intrigued. At some point, you mentioned it was, I think, it was in idea number 20, you showed the video, and you mentioned that part of your uh, uh, or part of your process was also human feedback. At some point, you mentioned something like that. Yeah, at some point. Before, what, what do you mean with that? I mean, you mean that the users have, are, in this case, for instance, the policy at the beginning is like the, 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 the frame of the initial. Well, it's actually after the first, at the very beginning, the, the, the robot is not doing anything. And then the user is, is providing feedback in order to make this to, to, to swing the, the ball. Like the, the user will say, like, move, move more to the right or and to the left, to the right and up or backwards or whatever. And then the policy is taking this feedback to update the, the, the direction that it's giving. Okay, thanks. Uh, and then we proceed now with the, let's say, the more serious questions from the committee. And uh, let's start with uh, Robert Babuska, please. Thank you. Thank you very much. Uh, can you hear me well? Yeah, yeah, very well. Okay, so uh, Carlos, uh, first of all, congratulations with this uh, very interesting work. Of course, uh, several times when you visited Delft, so uh, I knew a little bit already, but it was very nice to read your thesis and also listen to this presentation. I think I have about five questions, so let's see how we can accommodate them. Uh, let me start with first a, a very general one. So um, I, I like that you demonstrate your results not only in simulations, but also in uh, real experiments on physical robots and, and other systems. So my question is, what do you have encountered any system or experiment in which your method actually failed? Because I know that people in robotics, they tend to show the results where the method works, but sometimes it's just one out of so many experiments where it worked and it didn't work in the others. So could you comment on this in your case, please? Yeah, well, the biggest limitations that we have found with this method is that we are still depend on, on on the response of the human. I mean, tasks that are very fast. Are, are you listening well? Yes, 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 I can hear you, go ahead. Um, in, in, in problems where the, the, the frequency or the dynamics is very fast, where the users cannot uh, like evaluate what to do, in, the, in those tasks we, we cannot teach. Maybe we can teach you like trying to, to change the approach or maybe recording and then uh, re uh, uh, replaying this in the slow motion and giving the feedback in those cases. But for instance, when I was in Delft the first time, I played with another pendulum, the, uh, the Quasar, I think it's called the Quasar pendulum. The one that is, uh, this is a small box that has a, a, a rotor and has, has an undirectuated pendulum. This, this was very fast. I played like only 30 minutes with that and I thought that it was maybe dangerous because I was reaching the limits and I was not getting uh, improvement. So I switched to a different platform and I didn't touch much, but I think that this, 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 kind of, this is an example of uh, problems where it's, the dynamics is faster and maybe it's not possible to, to give feedback uh, for a user. Okay, so you attribute the failure in this particular case to the speed of the dynamics? Yes. Okay. Uh, was there any instance in which the method would fail for some other reason, maybe that you were not able to find the right uh, tuning parameters or something else? Mm, in the experiments we did, no. Mm, okay. Yeah, the experiments we did, no, but I'm trying to think of maybe cases where it is not possible, but now it's hard to think about it. All right. Yeah, okay. but, but by the, the experiments, it was, I mean, it was actually very easy to implement, and I was getting this learning very fast. Yeah. 
Okay. All right. Thanks a lot. Um, so my second question is about, uh, let's say, the, the type of feedback the user or the coach is given, giving, and you said it could be evaluative or it could be feedback in the action domain. So I, my first question here is, what if the reward function is not correctly specified? You know, in, in many complex problems, the difficulty with reinforcement learning is that it's non-trivial to define the right reward function. Yeah. So could it be that the system has, the, the reinforcement learning system has a reward function that is guiding the, the, the learning into a different direction than, than the user has in mind? So the user would be giving corrective feedback that would not be in accordance with what the reward function is dictating. Could this happen? Yeah, uh, well, this is similar to a question that the professor Eduardo asked me after reviewing my thesis. And what I said is that there are two different kinds of bad reward functions. Some, some reward functions are bad because just they don't um, represent the, the objective of the task at all, or some others are just poorly informative. So are not very helpful for, for guiding the, the, the agent to learn, but still are, are okay. I mean, they, if, they, if the policy is optimal, it, it will be represented in the reward that is obtained. So if, the, if it is the case where the, the reward is wrong, it is not exactly representing the, the task, it will be hard for this uh, uh, hybrid approach because the reward function, the, the reinforcement learning agent is, is on top of, of the exploration that the user is giving. So if the user is trying to go to a different uh, region of the policy, oh, I mean the, the space of, uh, of solution, the, the, the reward function will punish that maybe. And then the, the, the process will get stuck. But if it is the case with the, where the, the um, where the uh, reward function is, is maybe just is very sparse and just providing reward when the, the task is accomplished with any other information, without any other information. In that case, uh, this is very good for complementing that because the, the guidance is given by the user and then if, if it is right, at the end, the, the, the reward function will say that and will give the, the, the reward. Okay. But, but yeah, otherwise, punishment, right? Yeah, that, that is clear. I think that is clear. So, um, in the first situation, would it be somehow possible to correct the reward function? So, imagine the following scenario. So, somebody has designed the reinforcement learning system and has put in a reward function, but then somebody else is actually coaching the robot, having you know, a slightly different strategy or, or a goal, not, not really the goal, but let's say the strategy to reach the goal in mind. So there is, a, there is a discrepancy between, let's say, the two things. So would there be a way within your framework to actually somehow correct the, the reward function in this case? Well, like, it is working now? No, but this is also another part of the future work uh, that I didn't mention, I forgot, but it is about uh, incorporating this kind of feedback for inverse reinforcement learning. So, yeah. because that, that the reason actually that I, I ended up working with this is because I, I needed at the, beginning of, at the beginning of my PhD to work with reinforcement learning in a problem where I, could, I never found a good representation for the, for the reward, for reward function. So I, I was motivated actually to go to the side of uh, inverse reinforcement learning, but then I suddenly got uh, good results with interact, interactive machine learning. But, well, the point is that in English we usually use demonstrations, and we suppose that the demonstrations are optimal or good, and then from them we derive out a, a reward function. But we also can try to do that with the policies that we are uh, improving with corrective feedback. And additionally, okay. we can use not only those policies, but also the, the, the areas of the stated space where the human is giving feedback, because maybe those 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 areas are like importance points, like maybe inflection points of for, for the reward function. Then I think that I will work in this actually this year 
for combining this framework with the uh, inversion post modern. All right, okay, thank you. Uh, and maybe my last question for, for now. So, in I think all of your examples, you have uh, demonstrated that the uh, user feedback uh, leads to speeding up the learning process. Um, my interest would be in a slightly different setting where maybe the speed is not so important, but the reinforcement learning system itself is only able to reach, uh, let's say, a certain level of performance, like 80% of the instances would be executed correctly and 20% would be uh, executed incorrectly, maybe in a grasping task or something like this. Is it possible to or have you, have you ever looked into whether the user feedback could actually help to remove the 20% of the failed cases or at least improve up to, I don't know, 95 or something like this? Well, in the experiments that we did combining reinforcement learning with, um, with uh, the human feedback, it was more the other way around. We, we left uh, the, the last part of the improvement uh, for the, for the um, reinforcement learning part because it was more like for, for fine tuning. But so I, I don't have any, any example of the case that you are pointing out. But it will always depend of on, 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 on the task. Uh, I, I, I can show you because I didn't talk about this plot, but you are watching the, the screen still, right? Yes, yes, I can see it. Yeah, in, in this experiment, I talk about uh, uh, these two plots, but I, I didn't mention this third, where I changed the, the, the setting of, of the experiment. The, originally, the, 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 the setting was this big ball, uh, this big cap, and we changed it for, for the smaller. The thing is, I mean, we were uh, observing the, the the reward function with a, a opti track system, uh, and the reward was basically based on, on the distance where when the ball uh, crosses the, the rim of, of the gap, and then if it is in the center, it is good. I mean, it's optimal. Then when we use the the, the big one, or, or if you, we use the, the the small one, still the reward is the same. The, the same policy should work for both, but for the users, it with, with the smaller, which is a bit counterintuitive, because with the smaller it's, it's harder to, 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 I mean, only the most close to the optimal policies are, are, are the possible that make the ball fall in the gap. But for the users, it was more helpful because in that moment they, 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 they can see if the ball is close to the, the center. Like when the, the gap is bigger, it is harder to, with the perception of, of our vision, it's, it's, it's harder to, to estimate if the ball is crossing exactly in the center. So it always will depend on, on what the perception of the human is, is, is obtaining from, yeah. the, from the environment. Okay. But I do have any, also an example for the case that you are pointing. Okay, okay, thank you very much. So yeah, thank you for this opportunity. I think for now I'm, uh, I'm happy with the answers. Okay, thank you. <laughs> Okay, uh, bedankt uh, Robert. Uh, uh, now we go with uh, Eduardo Morales. Okay, uh, thank you. Uh, thank you, Carlos, for your your presentation and, and congratulations for for your work. Uh, I I have some questions. I, I guess some of them I I pointed out in the in the previous document. But uh, well, the first one is about this uh, binary feedback. Uh, in, uh, in, in, in your work, you, you have this only like, positive negative feedback. Uh, and uh, I wonder if, if that's a limitation or not, or if you have considered other types of feedback. It's, I mean, not only the binary, but also probably uh, giving some magnitude of, the, of this uh, Duration or something like that. So I don't know if you would like to comment on that. Yeah. Well, the use. I mean, the, the algorithm is not limited to the binary feedback, but we always presented that, and we did all the experiments based on binary feedback because it was easier from the point.